Good morning, people. This is a Lenovo V15 G4. Will this laptop be your next computer purchase? My last review was on a HP 255G10 with a Ryzen 3 7000. And the i3 13th gen in this laptop actually performed faster at gaming than the Ryzen 3 in the HP. Find out why in this video. Here's a hint. The model number for this Lenovo will be on your screen now. Link to this laptop will be in the description. And if you are watching on TV, the QR code will be on the screen. Before we get into the interview, do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe if my videos help you in any way. We just passed the 5,000 sub milestone and I'd love to have 10,000 of you in the family by the end of the year. Let's make it happen, people. This laptop has a 15 watt TDP 6 core Intel i3 1315U that boosts up to 4.5 GHz. Intel says it can boost to a 55 watt TDP, but Lenovo limits it to 15 watts in this laptop chassis. It has an Intel UHD graphics with a max frequency of 1.25 GHz. RAM is 16 GB of DDR4 memory running at 3200 mega transfers and it has a 512GB PCIe 4 NVMe SSD. For display, it has a 15.6 inch TN screen with a resolution of 1080p. It has brightness of 250 nits and a color gamut of 45% NTSC. This screen was a bit of a disappointment. The brightness on this screen is not very good and you wouldn't want to use this in direct sunlight. Also being a TN and not an IPS, it had a washed out look and the colors were very muted. On the flip side, the speakers in this laptop were really great. Take a listen to the audio at 100%. Just kidding guys. These downfire and stereo speakers are the same as every other budget laptop. It's as if all these manufacturers use the same speakers and point them towards the table or your lap, as if they wanted it to be as far away from your ears as possible. The max volume is not good and the sound quality is just good enough. The keyboard is non-backlit and chiclet style with a numpad. It's a good keyboard with the typical quality you've come to expect from Lenovo. The trackpad is average size and works as it should. As usual, the no backlight life sucks and it's a deal breaker for me. I like using my devices at night and I don't want to turn on a light to see my keys. Am I being a bit too harsh? Let me know in the comments. For ports, on the left side it has a power port, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a HDMI port, a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port with power delivery and display capabilities and an audio combo jack. It's good to see that Lenovo didn't cheap out with a data-only USB port here, or even worse, no USB-C port at all, like the Acer Aspire 5 I reviewed a couple videos back. On the right side, it has a Kensington lock, a USB-A 2.0 port. This is disappointing to see. No laptop should be shipping with a USB 2.0 port in these times. The final port is a Gigabit Ethernet port, which is what we'd see in a business class laptop, so it's good to see one in this price range. This laptop was a fraction more difficult to get into as it uses T4 screws. So you'd have to get a screwdriver like this one to open it up. On the inside, the upgradability options were really good. For memory, it has eight gigabytes soldered on board but you do have the option to replace the other 8GB chip, giving it a possible max of 40GB of RAM. With two 8GB chips installed, it's running in dual channel mode, and this is the reason it outperformed the Ryzen 3 that was in my last review. You'll see the results in the gaming test coming up. It has space for a SATA SSD, which we don't normally see in laptops these days. It's a nice to have, but I'd rather have seen a bigger battery in this space. The other things that can be replaced were the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth combo card and the 512GB 2230-size M.2 NVMe SSD. Power is provided to this laptop by a 65W barrel tip charger. 
but that's not the only way you can charge it. As stated earlier, this laptop has a fully capable USB-C port supporting power delivery and display output. Because of this, we can carry a much smaller than USB-C charger with a 10-foot cable, kind of like this one that can charge up to two devices. This will lighten the load you have to carry in your EDC because you won't have to carry the bulky original charger. The battery in this laptop is 38 watt hours and in my YouTube playback test it lasted 5 and 3 quarter hours with the display brightness at 50% and the power mode set to balance. Even though Lenovo limits this laptop to 15 watts, the Ryzen 3 with the same TDP typically gives you an extra 40 to 50% battery life with a similar size battery. AMD is definitely winning in this category. Let's get into the benchmarks. Cinebench R23 gave us a multi-core score of 3732 and a single core score of 1430. 3D Mark Firestrike had a score of 2666, which was 30% faster than the Ryzen 3 we reviewed in my last video. GTA 5 plays at a comfortable 49 FPS at 900p, normal settings with anti-aliasing turned off. In the Division 2, it was set to 720p with low settings, and the frame rates were stable at 30 frames per second in the open world and would go as high as 45 in enclosed spaces. It played comfortably for hours. Seven twenty p low settings is as low as I'd go in Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, especially on a fifteen point six inch screen. Twenty five fps is not ideal, but it is playable if you're desperate. Also, this was thirty two percent faster than the Ryzen three, which only gave us seventeen fps. I like the build quality of this laptop. Lenovo's plastics are usually high quality, and this laptop is an example of that. It should hold up well to normal usage. Also, it's not painted, so it should hide minor scratches that will come up with everyday use. One thing to note, however, is that this laptop is a fingerprint magnet, and you'll have to clean it regularly to get rid of smudges, or just ignore them. Having a full-featured USB-C port with display and power delivery capabilities, as well as an Ethernet port, are nice to have features making this laptop feel more like a business class model. In terms of performance, I think it did well for an i3. It was 30% faster than the Ryzen 3 in my last review, but that was because it's running in dual channel mode, while the Ryzen was in single channel mode. I would expect the Ryzen to perform similarly, if not better, with the same memory setup. Thanks for watching this review of the Lenovo V15 G4 laptop. Would you buy this laptop after watching this review, or are you seeing a deal breaker for you? something that you couldn't live with or without. Let me know what that might be in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. God bless.